Hello, I am glad to be with you. I am David Eidbonner. I want us to look at the topic today, the Esther favor, the Esther kind of favor. I'm going to be speaking and teaching on how to get favor, the kind of favor Esther in the Bible had, and how you could attract it, use it, and retain it. Amen? May the Lord bless this teaching. Father, thank you for your word. Teach us, Lord. Give us understanding of your word. May your word go forth with power. Heal, save, deliver. Let your word, O oh Lord, cause the hearts of men to cry out for you. Draw us closer to yourself, even as you teach us. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, the Esther kind of favor. Let me give you a, sto- uh, a brief summary of the story of Esther. Esther, in the Bible, the book of Esther, she lost her parents at an early age. She was adopted by her cousin, who was a gate man to the king of Persia. Esther was beautiful, yeah. She was beautiful. Esther feared God. Her adopted father feared God. So she had a very good background of the fear of God. Now, Esther was picked among the beautiful young ladies to replace Queen Vashti, who had misbehaved. But you know, God take it away to establish. God removes so that he can place his own. So Vashti misbehaved because it was time for Esther to manifest. It was time for Esther to enter her, her place in destiny. It was time for Esther's destiny to be fulfilled. And that is the reason why Vashti had to misbehave and leave. I want you to know something that you are born for a purpose and you are born for a time. You are born for such a time as this. You have been created by God to fulfill a purpose, to supply a need. Your generation needs you. No matter how it it has been in your life, do not give up. Your time will come. Your time is different from the other person's time. The other person's time may be at the age of 20. Yours may be at the age of 50, 40. Yours may be at the age of 10, the other person at the age of 30. But I want you to know something, that your time is your time, specific for you. It is your time to manifest. It is your time to bring into fruition that which God has planted in you and through you. I want you to know that as you walk in faith, as you trust in Jesus Christ our Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach in Hebrew, you will not fail, no matter what the enemy throws at you you will succeed because you are born for such a time as this. You are equipped for anything you face in life. God will not allow any difficulty, any trial that is beyond your your conquering ability. He will not allow any difficulty come your way that he has not already prepared a way of escape for you. God has prepared you to be stronger than whatever trial that comes your way. Be it by finance, whatever means, God has prepared you to stand You are able to face any giant in your life. You are able to deal with any Goliath that comes your way. You are more than able to stand your ground. You are able to conquer, to succeed in whatever you are doing. God has placed in you a whole lot of things, talents, skills that you are yet to discover. And you may never discover it except you have fellowship with him, except you are walking with him. If you do not walk with the giver, you will not know what you have been given. The fruit will not mature except it is connected to the tree. I want you to know something that you are equipped to overcome whatever comes your way and to shine and to fulfill your destiny. God has a plan and that is why he sent you. You are a part of his plan and you are an answer to a problem, a solution to a puzzle. 
You are born because this generation needs you and other generations need you. You are born. Irrespective of how you were born, you were born with a purpose and that purpose will be fulfilled as you walk with Jesus. Esther had a very humble beginning. Who would have thought that that little girl wearing uh, second-hand clothes, most likely, not very educated, not classy, would become the most powerful woman in the Persian Empire, the queen to the emperor. Who would have thought of that? No one. Because men judge according to what they think and what they see. God places the most beautiful things in the most broken vessels. Because he loves to take trash and turn it into treasure. God loves to take the lowly, the little, and exalt them. God loves to exalt people. You think he just loves being exalted? He loves to exalt people. He says in the book of James, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. James or Peter. And he will exalt you in due season. It's either in the book of First Peter or James. Humble yourself. If you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he exalts you in due season. You humble yourself before him. Learn from him. Let him prepare you for where he's taking you to. Because he has a place he's taking you to. If you are not prepared, you would get there and fail. What was the difference between Saul and David? Saul was placed as king, but he was not prepared for that throne. And so when he got there, he loved to please men. He wanted to please men, and he lost his throne. God took David through a rigorous training, a difficult training. David was homeless. David was hungry. David was being chased. He was slandered. He was labeled a criminal, an enemy to the kingdom of Israel. He was mocked by Nabal. He went through a lot of things. His family were taken captive. And in all this, he learned how to trust God in abundance, in scarcity. He learned the work of faith. And by the time he became king, he knew who put him there. He knew it was not man that put him there. And so he was loyal to the one that put him there. And that is why David did not fail. David succeeded because he knew who put him there and he was faithful to the one that put him there. He had been trained by God to walk in humility, to walk in faith, and to walk in wisdom. And that is the reason why his throne was established. Esther was trained by Mordecai. Esther was brought up by Mordecai, a man who feared God and a man who was disciplined. And that is why she had in her that discipline. Are you training yourself for that very day? You want favor? You want to be lifted? Are you preparing yourself for that lifting? When the lifting comes, would you be ready to, to be lifted? Would you be lifted and remain there? Your gift can take you to the top. But only your character and integrity can keep you there. If you don't have the right character, you will fall down. You can become famous, but you can also be a disgrace to yourself. You can let yourself down. You can go depressed like many cele so-called celebrities. who have no, There is nothing to celebrate about them. They are depressed into drugs, into pedophilia. Why? Because they got fame that they were not ready to handle. They got prominence that they didn't have the discipline to handle. They were lifted to a position that they did not have the character to sustain them there. The importance of character, the importance of integrity, all these you get as you walk in the world, as you walk with God, obeying his word, spending time in prayer and in study of the word of God, that is how you will stay on top. Not just get on top, you will stay on top. Because when your opportunity comes, when your opportunity comes, would you be ready? Would you be ready when your time comes? The time of your manifestation is at hand. Would you be ready? If you are pulled out from your situation all of a sudden and placed in prominence, would you act like Joseph? 
who did not revenge on his enemies? Or would you quickly revenge on your enemies? Would you be suddenly placed on the throne like David was placed on the throne all of a sudden at the death of King Saul and fear God sufficiently to hear God's direction and follow them? Or would you suddenly be on the throne and be so excited at what you call your achievement or God's blessings on you and then you begin to do whatever comes to your mind, what you have imagined? Are you ready for your promotion? Be prepared for promotion. When promotion comes, it does not ask if you are pre prepared. It just picks you. But if you are not prepared, it will drop you. Promotion goes with the prepared. Promotion goes with the prepared. The reason why some people miss their opportunities in life is because they are not prepared. They are not watching. The Bible says watch and pray. Not pray and pray. Watch and pray. Because when you are praying for something, God will cause opportunities for that thing to happen, to come to you. When you see those things happening, would you recognize them? Would you recognize somebody sent into your life to bless you? Or would you be so unprepared that when someone comes with the answers to your prayer, you are like, mm. If somebody were to walk up to you and ask you, what would you do with $20,000? Would you be prepared with a business idea or would you begin to think, I'll, I'll do this, I'll buy this, I'll, uh, irrelevant things? Are you ready for your promotion? If suddenly you get a job, have you prepared yourself to work with others, to work in that capacity? If suddenly you have, uh, you, maybe you've been praying for a child, suddenly you get pregnant. Do you have the discipline to train your child in the fear of God or are you going to spoil that child and make the child a problem to humanity? How ready are you for your lifting? Esther was prepared for her time of lifting. And so when she was picked as a maid to uh, be presented to the king, she had to go through some training process. And the Bible says that while others were picking whatever they wanted, she said to the Enoch in charge, give me what you feel is best for me. Esther had learned how to submit to authority, and so she submitted to the authority of the one who was to train the women, and said, whatever you say I should do, whatever you say I should take, when I want to go meet the king, I will take it. And she obeyed the Enoch in charge of the women. She had been trained, whereas other women were taking excessive makeup, doing whatever they felt their friends would do, trying to outshine the others, trying to be in vogue. Esther was calm to recognize that that eunuch was the one to take her to her place of lifting. And so she said, whatever you give to me, I will take. The Bible says she took only what the Enoch recommended for her. Will you take what God recommends for you or would you try to be in vogue? Would you try to be like every other person? Which would you do? How ready are you for your promotion? How ready are you? You see something about Esther. She was trained and she was ready. And so she went to meet the king. You see all this in Esther chapter 2 and 3. When she went to meet the king, She must have conducted herself the way she was trained to. She did not dress sexy. She dressed like a queen. And so she became a queen. I'm going to show you where it is in the Bible, that character trait in her. If you are dressing sexy, you will only make yourself a sex toy. You have no reason to wonder why men are not wanting to marry you. Because you are presenting yourself as a sex toy. You are sexy, so only for sex. And that is the reason why 
Husbands are not coming. Your husband is not coming because he is looking for the real you, the way you should be. Whereas you are presenting yourself as a sex tool, he is looking for a wife. And so he has to go looking elsewhere. Whereas you are crying, God, give me, where's my husband? God has sent your husband to you. But if you are sexy, you will miss him because your husband is looking for his wife. Esther, in chapter five when she was to go meet the king at the time that Haman had influenced the king to make a decree to kill the Jews Esther did not after she had fasted and prayed she did not go sexy to meet her husband who she has not seen in a while assuming well by the time he sees me hot he is going to quickly stretch forth his scepter to me you know the Bible says that nobody could Go to the presence of the king of Persia, except he was called by the king of Persia. Or when he came in, the king of Persia would stretch forth his um, staff of authority, that is, scepter, towards that person. If he didn't stretch his scepter towards that person, that person was killed. It was a serious matter. And Esther had not been called for 30 days. You see it in chapter 4. For 30 days, she had not been called. She decided to apply the training she got from Mordecai. Esther was a righteous woman. One, the first key to favor is righteousness. Your identity as a believer. Are you born again? If you are not born again, you are not entitled to the divine favor. You may get it on the basis of God's mercy. But it will not be in the measure it should be because you are not his child. The, the children's food is served to the children. It is the crumbs that go to the dogs. The dogs will have a taste of what the children are eating, but they will not have a meal of what the children are eating. There's a difference. The dogs could have a taste, but they will not have the meal. The children will have the meal. They will have it in abundance. The dogs will only have the crumbs which they fight for. So if you are born again, you are entitled to God's favor. Esther was righteous, and so she was entitled to God's favor. And when the king had not sent for her, and she had to go see the king, she fasted for three days along with the Jews. And she she acquired more favor through her status as a believer as a righteous person she got divine favor to go and see the king and when she was going to see the king she dressed like a queen dress the way you want to be addressed if she had gone in there dressed sexy thinking she would seduce the king and the king would be find her irresistible she would have lost her head she dressed like a queen that she was and she attracted the attention of a queen and she got the blessings and the the, the answers of a queen so when you want favor the first thing is have a status have a status with christ be a queen be a priest and you will be taken as such you will carry the favor of god the bible says in psalm 23 the lord is my shepherd and it ends with surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life as long as the lord almighty god yahweh is your shepherd goodness and mercy follow you goodness and mercy is favor goodness is favor so with goodness will follow you. It is your legal escort. Favor is your legal escort. Wherever you go, as long as you follow the master, favor follows you. Curses don't follow you. Oppression of the devil doesn't follow you. Sickness doesn't follow you. Favor follows you. Goodness, God's goodness follows you. And his mercy follows you because you follow the Messiah. Esther, as a believer, went there with the favor of a believer. And then she took a step further. Good understanding. You know, I told you the first one is your, um, it's your birth. Your new birth. The first stage, the first step to favor is your new birth. Thereafter, good understanding. Your new birth is being born again. Thereafter, you have good understanding. Esther applied understanding. She spoke and dressed like where she was going when joseph was called from the prison to meet pharaoh he had prepared in his mind how he would behave and what does the bible say the bible says that he changed his clothes from the prison ugly prison clothes 
to better clothes, and he shaved his beards. The Egyptians did not like beards. The Hebrews liked beards and still do. But he prepared himself to mingle with the high through the powers of Egypt. And so he shaved so that when he stands in their midst, they do not look down on him. He prepared himself with a mindset of where he is going to, not where he is coming from. Stop looking behind at what you have suffered. Look at your dream and pursue your dream, believing that God is able to do more than you could ever ask or think. You are thinking God is answering your thoughts. So when you are thinking about where you are going to, God uh, sends forth situations and people that will help you to get to where you are thinking about. So when you are asking in prayer and when you are thinking at the same time, you are attracting the favor to take you to your destiny, to take you to your dream. Joseph changed his clothes. Esther wore the clothes of a queen and she stood like a queen. And the king identified with her that this is my partner. This is my helpmate. I'm a king. I have a queen. And that is my queen. And the favor of God was at work with Esther. And the king stretched forth his scepter. And she was called in. See that? First, her new bed, her righteousness. Secondly, good understanding, how she conducted herself. And she called the king away from his environment. Say, please, I want to prepare dinner for you. I would like you to join me. The king was excited. Whoa, I'm coming. She showed concern for the king. Let me tell you something. If you want a promotion in your place of work, show concern for your boss beyond your salary. And your boss will promote you to a higher salary. You have three employees. A boss says, I want a cup of coffee. One employee says, I would also like one too. The other employee says, when you buy yours, please buy for me. The third employee says, can I go buy you one? Do you know, the first employee that also was wishing will remain on that level. He has nothing to contribute. So he has to stay on that level. The second employee, employee that said, when you buy yours, buy for me too, is a liability. Such an employee will get fired or demoted soon because that employee is a liability. He's not contributing, rather he's seeking to collect. But the third employee says, let me go buy you, my boss, a cup of coffee. And the boss looks and says, wow, if I allow this employee to buy me a cup of coffee, this employee, I'm going to be at the, at the depth of my employee because the employee will say, I bought, I bought you a cup of coffee. We say, no, I must do you a favor so that you would rather be at my depth. Either the boss will go and buy coffee for that employee and himself or he will promote that employee and that is wisdom. The same way you treat your customers. You want to do business and your prices are higher than your competition and you're asking God why your business is not moving. Put your price at par with your competition. Let your prices be competing with the other prices and you are going to have people wonder what's the difference. Let me just go to this one. Even the slight price uh, high, uh, increase wouldn't mean anything to me. But when you shoot your prices up and you are wondering why you don't have customers, there's a problem. Look here. It is good understanding that brings favor. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 15, good understanding brings favor. If you want to look at Esther's story, look at uh, chapter 4, the last verse of chapter 4, and the first three verses of chapter 5. See how Esther conducted herself before the king. And lastly, you ask for favor. Ask for favor. The Bible says you should ask for favor. For, for you to have good understanding, ask. If you lack wisdom, James 1, 5, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives it freely. God will give you wisdom. He will give you wisdom that you need to triumph over every situation. God will give you wisdom. Just ask him for wisdom. He wants you wise. It is your right to be wise. Ask God for favor. Ask God for favor. You can get favor by your new breath. You can get favor 
by good understanding, by being sensible. If you do not have wisdom, ask God for wisdom. And you can get favor by asking God for favor. Asking him to change your status. Asking him to open doors for you. But I tell you this, when you ask him for favor, make sure you are willing to be prepared, to be trained for that favor. So that when that favor comes, you will receive it and enjoy it. Three ways to get favor. Be born again. That's the foundation favor. You want a step higher? Good understanding. Be wise. Read books. Be, increase your knowledge. Read books. Not just your academic books. Read books. Investigate things. Research. Study the word. Listen to messages like this one. And if you want a higher level of favor from there, you ask for you ask for it. Ask to be a blessing to people around you. Ask God to open doors for you so that you can bless others. And I'm sure He will do that. Glad to be with you. I would like you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, David Igbona Ministries. If you are watching on YouTube, if you are watching on television, tune in same time. I'm also on Facebook. My ministry page is David Igbona Ministries. It's on Facebook. Like the page and you follow me. Subscribe, as I said, so that whenever I upload a video, you get notified. You click on the subscribe button. It's just below um, this video's uh, screen. Click on it. You may see a bell appear. Click on that bell. It will notify you anytime I upload a video. There are other videos you can watch on YouTube. God bless you. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen and amen.